it still surprises me that a network, a broadcast network, brought this show into existence. American Crime is created by John Ridley who, prior to this series, won the Academy Award for Best Adapted Screenplay for writing the screenplay for 12 Years a Slave, which, of course, was an adaptation of Solomon Northrup's novel. Now, Ridley didn't direct this film. That was done by Steve McQueen. However, on this show, he proves he has some directing chops. This series is an anthology show meaning, like American Horror Story and True Detective, each season's going to focus on a different story, a different crime, if you will. Some of the cast members may stay for multiple seasons, but they'll be playing different characters over time. This first season takes place in Modesto, California, and the crime is the murder of Matt Skokie, a Caucasian war veteran seemingly happily married he and his wife were brutally attacked in a home invasion. His wife was put into a coma at the start of the season. That's how badly she was attacked. Meanwhile, Matt died. This murder catalyzes a major series of events, bringing many people from different walks of life together just to this town. There's Felicity Huffman and Timothy Hutman's character, Barb and Russ. They were the victim's parents. These two are divorced, and they were divorced pretty nastily as Russ got into some gambling problems many years ago, which prompted the separation. The suspect in question is a man named Carter Nix, played by Elvis Nolasco. Now, Carter, a black man, was very disillusioned by his life, his home life. He found love in a sweet lady by the name of Aubrey Taylor, played by Caitlin Gerard. They loved each other very much. They were very happy with one another. However, their lives had some difficulty. See, Aubrey was a bit of a drug addict. Because of that and bad decisions that were made, you know, they were a homeless couple, really ever finding refuge with drug dealers and stuff like that. Both were there at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. Carter was the one who got accused based on a witness statement from Hector Tonts, played by Richard Cabral. Now, Hector comes from Mexico. He got himself into some criminal activity, lining himself with gangs and drug traffickers. You get the sense that he definitely, he doesn't really want to do that, but he was just kind of stuck there. And he was the one who drove Carter and Aubrey to the house where Matt was killed. How did he get that car? Well, the car was lent to him by Tony Gutierrez, played by Johnny Ortiz, a young kid, son of a man named Alonzo, a single father, who owns a repair garage and just happened to have this car as a side project. So thus, Tony is also arrested as an accomplice to the murder, which obviously makes things very hard for Alonzo and his daughter and their family, to the point where Alonzo creates backlash for himself when he makes a statement to a TV news crew about illegals, referring to Hector, making the rest of us, referring to Latinos in his community, look bad. That created a lot of backlash, a lot of hate against his family. So what you might be starting to get is that race is an issue on this show. It's an issue that gets covered. However, that's not where the majority of the race subject is based in. It's actually between the victim's family and the suspect's family. Now, the suspect, Carter, has a sister named Doreen, or at least she was born Doreen. However, she changed her name to Aliyah Shadid when she converted to Islam. She is very proud of being a Muslim, and she wants her brother to join Islam too. And one thing you'll find with both sides, the suspect's side and the victim's family side, is that there is a fear of racial bias in the way this case is proceeding in the justice system. 
Aaliyah is worried that Carter is being held and arrested by minimal circumstantial evidence. That they just went straight to arrest him because he was the black guy, without really investigating it further, implying that they probably would have done so otherwise if Carter was white. Barb is worried that the justice system is treating his son's case like it's no big deal. Just, he was a white guy that got himself into some legal trouble, perhaps. Drug trouble. Oh, so it's no big deal that he got killed by a black guy. We're not going to make this a big deal. She's worried about that. So both are worried about racial biases in the system, which makes the tension really extraordinary and interesting to watch. Usually in a TV show, if there's racial bias, it's probably against the black person, and it's very obvious against the black person, or the colored person in general. But usually it seems the police are the bad guys, and this isn't just in fictional television, but this is also the way this seems to be playing out in the media narrative. Now, some of this is true. Of course, there was the findings from the Justice Department on the whole Ferguson thing, saying that there was racial bias and prejudice being enforced at the police department. So, the, not saying this doesn't take place. This definitely happens. But the thing about this series is that you don't know if this is what's really going on. You're getting ideas of both different versions of it. Something else you also seem to get is how certain characters have personal prejudices of, them, of their own. And they don't mean to be prejudiced. This especially shows in Barb's character. She would say things here and there, nothing too blunt, but stuff that may come off a little insensitive for whatever per ethnicity she was referencing. You know, a, a type of assumption that's a little too biased, that probably should have had more thought before she uttered the words. Does this mean she's a racist? Maybe. Does this mean she's an irredeemable character and she's a horrible person that should be condemned and demonized by this show? Like other TV shows that depict racists? No. Because this show wants to be realistic in their take on racial prejudice. See, the thing about people that may have prejudicial feelings is that they don't know that they're prejudiced. They don't know that something they might, they're saying can be considered offensive to others. They don't realize it. They may think they're on the right side of the way things should be. They may say, I'm not racist, but sometimes the things they say could counter that. And it's not just with Barb, it's sometimes with Alia and a few of the other characters on this show. So you see all sides of the issue, of the race issue, that has to be admired about this show. It's very intelligently written and crafted. The cinematography is something you would never see in any other network show. There's a lot of long takes. The framing is not 100% orthodox. The camera movements are not super duper obvious. It's filmed like a way an auteuristic filmmaker would film a movie. I mean, granted, many auteurs would film their movies differently, but you definitely get the feeling that there is a specific directing style, someone's personal directing style, and that would, of course, be the style of John Ridley, who directed the first two episodes and the season finale. He didn't direct the other ones, but of course, being the one who runs the show, he's obviously created a format of how this show should be filmed and directed. In editing, sometimes midway through a conversation, it cut to, like, the same frame, the same shot, but... It's a person not talking, even though you hear them talking and they're not talking, you see their facial expression, they're making a facial expression, they're moving their face. You're seeing what they're thinking as they are talking. I don't know what you might think of that. I don't know if it might annoy you. It's definitely unorthodox, but it's very interesting and very bold. I almost wonder if they did that just so they can accommodate for screen time, since each episode has to be 42 minutes to accommodate for commercials. If that's the case, they made a very interesting artistic choice. This series is filmed on location, even though it wasn't filmed in Modesto, it was actually filmed in Austin, Texas. It's filmed in a real place, not in the studio lot or in a studio. You feel like you're there. There's just, there's something more natural about the lighting, the colors, the way everything's set up that just feels more real. Like, this is actually taking place. When people are walking, you don't think they're walking on this preset thing of concrete that can only go so far due to studio space. No, they're in a real place. 
anytime you ever watch anything that is filmed on location instead of in a studio, it automatically just makes the show better. A little side note on the character of Aaliyah Shadid, played by Regina King, is that she is Muslim, but she doesn't fall into the TV stereotypes of Muslim women. She's not Arabic. She's not a weak woman that is not very educated and is oppressed by her culture. No, not in the slightest. She is actually one of the strongest characters on this show. She is very outspoken. She is an activist. She wants her brother out of jail, and she's gonna do whatever she can to ensure that that happens, whether it's leading a protest, consulting heavily with his lawyer. You never see that on TV. Usually m Muslim women are people to be pitied because there's this stigma like, oh, Islam is so terrible to women. Well, the thing about Islam is that it's kind of like Christianity. There's the Westboro Baptist Church, and then there's the Catholic Church. Two very different ways of doing things. Islam is just as diverse. Heck, fun fact, most Muslims don't live in the Middle East like they're stereotyped on television. Most Muslims actually live in the Southeast Pacific. So this just demonstrates how the show is not afraid to bend stereotypes. In fact, it has to. It, it would have to break stereotypes in order for a show like this to work. American Crime is my favorite straight-up drama that I've seen all year. And by straight-up, I mean purely drama, no fantasy superhero stuff like I usually talk about on this channel with my television. I love this show from beginning to end. It's just so well done. It's so well crafted. This show may not be everyone's cup of tea. I know there are people in this world that have a hard time believing racism still exists because civil rights happened, so it's over and done with, right? No. Racism isn't over in the United States. Merely there is more attention being called to it when it happens. And people are still talking about racial issues today. Every so often it seems like a police department is being called out for racial bias when a black man is killed by police violence. Uh, you just have to look at Ferguson. You have to look at Florida. You have to look at Baltimore recently. Now, if you're watching this many years later, you probably forgot this. It'd be best to look these up, but this is 2015. So these are events that are very relevant as the time I was recording this. So race, the race issue in America still exists. And it's nice that we finally have a television show that depicts that very accurately. No one-sidedness, no straightforwardness. Heck, this show, even though it's a bit centered on a murder, it's not a mystery show. It's not like another whodunit type cop show with police officers and um, lawyers slash prosecutors as the main characters. They're not the main characters of the show. It's focused on the families and them reacting to that and how this event will shape them. I highly recommend that if you want to watch the show, wait till it comes out on Netflix or any other streaming service. I think the show works better with streaming due to how very slow and patiently paced this show is. I've heard some people complain about the pacing of this show and I remember thinking to myself, you know, I don't think they'd be saying that if this series was on Netflix and they could just binge through the whole thing. But if you're watching it for week for week, it probably would feel a little slow. This didn't bother me so much because I was very on board where this story was going to go. And I'm also very glad that this is an anthology show and that we're not going to see this story picked up later. They're going to try to stretch this out for multiple seasons because that would be stupid. No, I'm glad that they're taking the approach of multiple stories, a new story each season for however many long this show goes. If you like drama, if you like character stories, you like to watch good acting, and maybe you just want to see some really thought-provoking social commentary, American Crime is the show you should really check out. And that concludes my review for American Crime Season 1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.